When you're in Coimbatore, it's hard to miss the influence of the PSG family. Many of the educational institutes and hospitals here have been set up by the PSG Trust. It is one of the largest business families in the South, known as much for its textile business as for its philanthropy. And though Rajshripati started off in the same way, it is in the sugar business that she made her mark. Coimbatore or Kobai, the second largest city of Tamil Nadu, also called the Manchester of South India because of its prosperous textile industry, the city plays home to a handful of very prominent business families. At Pilamedu, turn off the bustling roads and you'll soon drive into the sprawling grounds of Rajshripati's mansion. When not in Delhi for her work as president of the Indian Sugar Mills Association, this is the place Rajshri calls home. A place she believes is an extension of her personality. The house is a constant love affair uh, for me and the house has evolved just as I have. Because when I built this house, uh, I was expecting my son and he's 19 today. And the house was also a sign of um, you sort of coming into your own because till then you were working the family business, textile, you sort of branched away, got yes. into sugars, moved away from your in-laws place. Absolutely. Um, it was really breaking free. Breaking free and living the life that I always believed I wanted to. A life of great freedom of thought, of, um, of conviction and uh, a great sense of um, fulfillment. But how did you juggle everything, you know, work, home, uh, practically bringing up two kids on your own because your husband is in Bangalore? Well, Anita, it was um, not easy. I mean, looking back, um, it wasn't easy at all because I had a, a mother who was uh, progressively uh, getting... Uh, After your father died, she went... Very, to very ill. I had to cope with my father's sudden death. I mean, he died at the age of 52, suddenly in an accident. So, uh, uh, and the sugar was a business that was highly volatile. Mm. And the first few years, there were huge losses. There wasn't enough sugar cane. People had, first of all, to learn to trust me. Mm. But nevertheless, uh, you know, I made the children a part of my life. I never sort of said home, children, office. You know, I sort of integrated everything. It was the only way that I could cope. And I also thought that was the most natural way. A woman, to me, first of all, must remain a woman in spite of being a corporate hmm. um, superwoman. You know, it's something um, that your father inculcated in you. I, I think he believed in that uh, a woman must be a wife and a mother first. And uh. in a way, he didn't really say it in those words, but that was how my mother was. A lot of times, you don't plan hmm. your life, and. Um, when you do plan your life, it doesn't necessarily happen the way Work you plan it. Through. Therefore, I do believe that life is a karmic happening. And um, the important thing to, to know is that um, you will go along that path. And to do that, you have to have faith in yourself and something about you. As I went along this path of being a corporate person, I be began to, to put all my creative sensibilities into that process. Mm -hmm. Because I've always looked at myself as a creative person. I wanted to be an architect. I wanted to be a Your dancer. Your parents uh, tore up the form in yes. the school of art. They absolutely did. Because, you know, um, those days in Coimbatore, nobody ever sent their children away to, to, to Bombay for five years, you know. Um, the fear that the girls will never come back and they get used to this bad city life and marry somebody from there and the whole... Uh, idea was uh, to get your daughters married off to the same kind of industrialist families of the same community um, which has been the tradition not having an architecture degree hasn't stopped Rajshree from designing her house office and even her sugar factory at Andipati Rajshri is also interested in dance, photography and contemporary art. She bought her first MF Hussain painting at 16 for 18,000 rupees and spent the next one year in debt. Today with a massive collection, she plans to set up a private art museum. 
A supporter of young artists, Rajshri likes to give everyone a chance. This, she says, is reflected even in the way she runs her business. I always believe in promoting from within as opposed to bringing in an outsider. Our, our boys in the factory, as you will see at the factory, all young. And uh, they've been, they started up as uh, engineers on the floor and they've risen to be general managers, you know. And that gives them a great sense of belonging. At the end of it all, what do you want in life, you know? It's not just a big pay packet. There's be something for here, something for here, you know, to, lay, to say that I am Rajshri Shubhra. Rajshri's 23-year-old daughter Aishwarya is looking into Rajshri Sugar Specialty Sugars Division while son Aditya is still studying. Both insist that being a corporate woman has neither made Rajshri less of a mum nor a business leader. It, it has, uh, you, you get uh, more publicity in the sense, in, especially in, you know, in her time, uh, maybe a decade ago or so. Um, when it was um, very different from things now. I think in that way it uh, helped a lot because you know, you get a lot of recognition. You don't have uh, women, business people um, coming up. So in that sense, I think it was um, very helpful. Ever since we've been little kids, my brother and I have never ever um, missed her in our lives. As in there's never been a, a point in our lives when we felt we wanted our mother and that she hasn't been there. Um, when we were in boarding school, we'd literally pick up the phone when she'd be in Vietnam or when she'd be in Delhi and we'd be like, well, we want you here this weekend and she would show up. Welcome back to Sadhne Penmani or Pa Women in Tamil. One of Rajshri Pati's biggest contributions besides that to the sugar industry is to this community. We're in Andipati, which used to be one of the most backward areas in Tamil Nadu. Today, this region is flourishing and it's all thanks to Rajshri sugars and chemicals. Farmers here now have vehicles, bank accounts and are able to give their children a decent education. They started growing sugarcane in a big way because they were assured of regular income, the fixed income was always there and any amount of cane could be taken up by the mill and then crushed because when you go in for crushing for jaggery it used to be a very small area. But right now, for since the mill has started, they have started cultivating it in a big way. The industry area was only a rock, no inhabitation. You can see now, you cannot see any even a single house there. Now, what to the formation of industry, a new town is formed in the name of Varadarajanagar. But Andipati was not always this way. In fact, in 1989, when Rajshri's father was granted a sugar license, it was because the then Chief Minister MGR wanted him to develop this backward region. At that point, without a steady stream of income, many of the communities here resorted to looting. Today, crime rate in the region is down drastically. Rajshri feels particularly vindicated because she took up the sugar business against the advice of many and stuck with it even after her father's sudden death in 1990. died while the project was still not completed and uh, obviously you know people had uh, trusted him and his reputation and uh, lent money financial institutions and banks so when he passed away suddenly you know I was still 15 years younger than I am today and um, uh, suddenly there was this um, onslaught of um, uh, lack of confidence from um, from institutions, from bankers, uh, from the public in general, you know, people calling up my relatives and saying um, that, you know, I mean, how can she uh, succeed in this business? It's such a male-dominated um, uh, business, you know, because uh, it's highly political even now in the mm. country and it means dealing with farmers. It's a rough business for a woman. So people suddenly felt that maybe I should sell out and um, you know other people who have been in the sugar business uh, for many um, years should take it and run it uh, or they wanted my um, in-laws to guarantee uh, mm. the bank loans and so on all of which I flatly refused I said I built the, the factory I may not know the business but I know the factory I know my area I know my farmers having worked with them for two years before 
the um, factory was completed i was the one who who tied up the loans and um, always with my father's guidance but I, i was the one who was physically managing the project therefore you know um, i said um, uh, well i i said to everybody i said give me a fair amount of time mm. give me 11 months because it takes 11 months for one cutting of a sugarcane crop yeah. so i said give me that one period one one uh, um, 11 month and i will show you that i can run this factory you must understand that a factory of this size had needed you know a minimum of 27000 acres yeah at, and at least um five black tons of cane yeah. crushing but yeah uh, we had 30000 tons of sugarcane for an entire year so the first two years were extremely difficult because mm-hmm. farmers had no confidence in the factory there was a factory earlier which was a private factory which was next to ours mm-hmm. and the promoters had failed miserably and uh, the farmers haven't been hadn't been paid for years so they were afraid of the same situation happening and um, so they were afraid to grow uh, sugarcane and i had to literally um, you know uh, get into a onto a jeep and go around from village to village like you see our politicians campaigning, campaigning for care and uh, with uh, sometimes on weekends with two little children in tow run mm-hmm. off um, and make these speeches in telugu and in tamil <laughs> and um, just um, literally beg the farmers telling them that you know listen guys i mean we built this big factory in your midst now for both our survival it's necessary that you support the factory and of course i mean you know 15 years down the line um as you've seen the farmers are so happy and i always had a vision for that mm-hmm. area i But you started i mean uh, the vision for the area was also uh, support the farmers by giving them uh, you know a, a good cane good right. loan good uh, facilities um and uh, to open bank accounts in their names to encourage saving and to start a school for the uh, uh for their children and we were imparting high class english medium education to yeah. the children of the village yeah you know i really want them to have a fair playing ground when they make their applications and perhaps a f- sponsor of you of them to uh, give them scholarships mm-hmm. to go to the iits or to universities abroad but this is my big dream when you've gotten to the sugar business perhaps it was a little bit of foolhardiness of youth now when you look back 15 years down would you have done things differently would you have entered an area that is bone dry against the advice of everyone you know <laughs> without a single man holding my hand <laughs> except my little boy of four <laughs> well um uh, that's not true i had the uh, a whole lot of well wishers and uh, the people who stood by me in the times that i couldn't pay their salaries they still stuck by me you know and the farmers stuck by me and so um, uh well to answer your question no i have been i'm very fulfilled today and perhaps that adventure was necessary to to make me understand the realities of what it takes to 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 run a hardcore uh, business Sugarcane farmers could earn anywhere between 15 to 25000 rupees annually for every acre of land cultivated besides the regular income rajshri sugars also provides loans for road development and digging of wells and it's not only the farmers who have reason to celebrate factory staff and workers at vadraj nagar the township named after rajshri's father all recognize her contribution to their lifestyle Great Vadodaraj Nagar the township that has been built by Rajshri Sugars for its staff and workers here Rajshri Pati is almost worshiped proof of that it's 8 pm and at her request the entire township has turned up here at the local Bhadrakali temple to stage their temple dance just for us Rajshri Sugars has encouraged the wives of the factory staff to form women's self-help groups where they make products like phenyl that can be sold to the factory and outside. 
Local cultural events and dances like these are also meant to keep the men from straying and guzzling what they earn in drink. Today, Rajshri Sugars and Chemicals has diversified interests. Recognizing that the sugar industry gives more byproducts than products, the company has two plants with sugar milling, distillery, and power co generation facilities. The company has also developed a strong R&D arm and is using it for research in cane varieties and developing biofertilizers. The entire organization goal is, or the R&D goal is to see that sugarcane cultivation and other crops are made almost eco-friendly and especially because of our concern to soils and to the environment, soil environment and external environment. Now, viewed from this angle, she also said, you know, that we should see that we promote the interests of the farmer so that he will be sustainable in terms of input. Rajshri Pati is now also heading the Indian Sugar Mills Association, a body that takes care of the interests of over 100 private sugar mills. In a highly fragmented sugar industry, which also has over 300 state-owned sugar mills, her biggest contribution has been to get the government to reinstate the ethanol program, by which sugar companies can produce and sell ethanol to be used as an alternative fuel. She was able to liaise with the government and convince the government that this was an essential program for the country and also convince the industry that we have to go back with a certain viable price to the government. We can't be talking about market-related pricing. So I think it's been a fairly uh, a good attempt at uh, getting the whole issue sorted out. As president of ISMA, Rajshri has to act as lobbyist, a role she thoroughly enjoys. I believe that uh, this industry um, can do so much. You know, we are the second largest producer in the world, only next to Brazil and we are the largest consumer in the world. I mean, with those kind of inherent strengths for the industry in the Indian economy, um, there's lots that we can do. But you don't mind living out of a suitcase and having to live in a city where you don't speak the language, you, you don't speak any Hindi? <laughs> Not a bit. In spite of all my trips and frequent staying in Delhi, I, I don't speak um, a word of Hindi. Um, I sort of managed all these years and I suppose I will um, you know, um, it's exciting and you know life is um, uh, like a roller coaster and you ride the highs and you learn to accept the lows. Okay. About the sugar industry per se, it, there are a lot of, it is still a regulated uh, industry and there are a lot of uh, political, uh, politicking within the industry. How do you see it go, uh, growing? If we open up and if we are open to um, increasing capacities of more and more investment into byproduct, um, power, um, alcohol, ethanol. So sugar is not the way, um, well, sugar, step forward. Sugar too, sugar too, except that sugar has to be um, deregulated. Uh, Brazil deregulated as early as um, 1997 and they went in for ethanol production and made it mandatory since 1931 and we're talking about it in 2005. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, if only the government is broad-minded enough and, you know, we, they really want to help the agro industry, sugar should be on the agenda and a priority on that agenda. Well, what about Rajshri Sugars? You are expanding. I mean, you've already started in Ayurveda uh, branch. So you're moving out of sugar only? No, no. Well, the Ayurveda is a pet project of mine. It's not part of Rajshri Sugars. It's, it's, um, it's um, a uh, collaboration with friends. And I've always believed in um, natural healing and uh, alternative medicine. So, I mean, that is not part of Rajshri Sugars. However, I would like to get into organic sugarcane growing, which we've already started. Um, uh, we've also laid out uh, uh, lands for organic herbal um, production of um, plants and so on for medicinal purposes. Um, slowly, slowly, but at this point, we have a very well-defined set of people uh, for the sugar business, which is our core business and the byproduct business. Okay. So we are looking at acquisitions anywhere in India, wherever there is cane, and if we find the environment is conducive for growth, we will be there.
Well, it's been interesting meeting with Rajshri Pati. She can be sugar and spice and everything that's nice and yet with quietly steely determination. It's a wrap on this episode of Power Women. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Good luck.